is. We're going to put those details on our website, ktbs.com, because that is such a cool way to, to help someone today. And there's so many other ways you can help United Way. Police say there's been at least eight deaths this year in the Texarkana area due to drug overdoses that involved fentanyl. Okay, let yeah. me come over and yeah. just love on him. Please do. Wow. Well, <laughs> they're really soft, right? Like, you yes, don't expect it, but they're so soft. so good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, little baby. We got a little zoo here yeah. in the studio. We've turned KTBS on the CW into a zoo. And I'm Jade Belexa. Thank you for joining us. We have breaking news. A Bossier City police officer has been shot during what appears to be a robbery this morning. Happened around 1030 a.m. near a Valero gas station on Industrial Drive. Medical leaders and local law enforcement are now partnering together to take the message one pill can kill to area schools. KTBS 3's Julie Parr is live in Texarkana, Arkansas with more on their new campaign to help save lives. Julie? Yes, Greg and Johnette, I am here now on the scene and it was scary moments for that mother and they are here right now just packing up some things from their van. Good afternoon, I'm Jade Belexa. Thank you for watching your news at 4. Every day, officers run into danger to save lives, and that came at a cost when a suspect shot a Bossier City cop during a deadly armed robbery that you see here. Now, KTBS 3's Madison Beam shows us how officers prepare for these intense situations with months of training. Hello everyone, I'm Jade Belexa here in the Weather Center with Joe Haynes. He's the man with the answer to everyone's question. Will the rain ruin our Easter weekend plans? I don't think so. Live and on your side, this is KTBS 3 4 o'clock news hour on KPXJ CW 21. I'm Jade Belexa, thank you for joining us. Police continued to search for the people responsible for a shooting that injured a six-year-old girl in Shreveport. It happened last night just before 7.30. Shreveport police have made an arrest in a deadly shooting on Fairfax Avenue and Morningside Drive from last week. They believe Edwan Alvarez to be responsible. He is charged with one count of second degree murder. The victim, 35 year old Amaya Jacobs, was shot multiple times while driving at the intersection of Fairfax Avenue and Morningside Drive. A witness saw bullet holes in the driver's side window and called police. Shell casings were found all around the car. For the past two days, law enforcement, prosecutors, and local leaders have been working together trying to decide how to reduce Shreveport's high crime rate. Right now in the 70s and the 80s as well across the region. There you see the Arklatex OK, some thunderstorms out to the west west of Dallas Fort Worth. Could that impact our weather tonight? Details on that coming up in a few moments. All right, thank you so much, Patrick. Police say there's been at least eight deaths this year in the Texarkana area due to drug overdoses that involved fentanyl. Medical leaders and local law enforcement are now partnering together to take the message one pill can kill to area schools. KTBS 3's Julie Parr is live in Texarkana, Arkansas with more on their new campaign to help save lives. Julie. Well, Jade, local police say they first started seeing an increase in drug overdoses and the use of Narcan. Jade. Yeah, fentanyl surely is deadly and dangerous. Thank you, Julie. Dr. Young and the police department will be taking the same presentation from today to Texas high school students later this month. If you plan to watch the Kentucky Derby, keep your eye out on a horse with a tie to Shreveport. Fertitas is known for its muffy sandwiches and for being a long-standing family-owned spot. But you might not know the family is also into racing. In January, they bought ownership stakes in this horse named Mage. He's been doing well in races and will now be running in the Kentucky Derby. Never would have dreamed. I've been watching the, the Kentucky Derby since I was about 15 years old. I've been interested in horse racing for many, many years, but um, never would have imagined I would have had a horse running in the uh, Kentucky Derby. Fertitta says he's feeling good about the race and pointed out that Mage is staying in the same stall that Secretariat was in 50 years ago. Wow, that's pretty cool. When he won the Kentucky Derby in record time, the race will start around 5.57 tomorrow afternoon.
The New Orleans teen who gathered up a record-breaking number of scholarships has made his college choice. Dennis Barnes, who goes by Malik, plans to attend Cornell University this fall. He received offers from 188 colleges and universities. Can you imagine that? That topped more than $10 million in scholarships. The school says his haul is more than any other college-bound senior in U.S. history. I've always admired the institution and it's something that I would love to be a part of because of the things that they're involved in in the community. The 16 year old senior says he plans to pursue a dual undergraduate degree in computer science and criminal justice. In Howard County, Arkansas, a judge says his truck was stolen from his home. Police are searching for this man, Xavier Melton of Texarkana, for the alleged theft. The truck was later found in a Nashville apartment complex, but two handguns and cash were missing from inside. A business surveillance camera allegedly showed Melton driving the judge's truck. The Texarkana Police Department, alongside Texarkana Harley Davidson, is bringing motorcycle safety awareness to the community this weekend. The event begins at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at the Harley Davidson dealership on Walton Drive. The event is set to help us learn how we can all share the road safely. Two weeks ago, TTPD motor officer Brent Hobbs had a close call with a car that made a sudden left turn in front of him. And when I was talking with her, she asked me, where did you come from? I did not see you. And I had my emergency lights activated at the time before the contact was made. I was shaking up the day that the crash happened. And the month of May is National Motorcycle Awareness Month. With the plethora of outdoor activities planned in the Arklatex, will the weather give us what we want? We'll have to see. Patrick may have a sweaty forecast for us <laughs> in store. Eight people were killed and at least seven others wounded when a gunman opened fire at the Allen Premium Outlets on Saturday. Leroy and Joanne Ely were there. My kneecap, I don't know, I've got bruised scratches, bad scratches on my arm, on both my arm. And when my husband and I, the second time, when we headed to try to get out of the way of the bullets, he fell with me. He had scratches on his arm. He got scratches on his knees, you know, but uh, it's just a blessing that we are still alive. What started as a family shopping trip turned into a horrific scene. Blood was everywhere. Uh, they were saying that a lady got shot outside of H&M where we were and they drug her up into H&M and blood was everywhere and my granddaughter saw that. And I realized she was coming out to me and that's when my wife and I ran. But my heart really goes out for those victims and those family members that has lost their loved ones and our church is a praying church. It would be okay, my wife and I. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been more than 200 mass shootings so far this year. Jade Belexa, KTBS 3 News. Memories are pouring in, remembering a young woman who lost her life too soon. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Anderson. And I'm Jade Belexa. Family members gathered to honor the life of Heaven Weed, who Shreveport police say was violently attacked by her boyfriend. Her mother found her March 2nd. Weed later died at the hospital. Known for being beautiful on the inside and out, Heavenweed's smile and laughter could brighten up any room. At 23 years old, she had goals of becoming a psychiatrist, but her life was cut short. Her family says she met Brandon Lindsay at a bar. They only dated a month. Um, and I was just over there that Tuesday before, and she cooked, she cooked pot roast the first time she's ever cooked. It was good, and she, was, she and I even told people she looked the happiest I've ever seen her. Oh, and she was just really, really happy. We had no idea. Nobody really had any ideas. Earlier this month, when Weed didn't show up to work or answer her text, her mother went to her home. She says Lindsay was there and told her three times she's messed up. Inside her bedroom, she found her daughter. To her room, because she was in there making this god-awful snoring noise laid in her bed with a sheet wrapped around her going from this way to that way. And her face is just beating up, just black and blue, and her eyes were swollen. It was just god awful. And then he picks her up and helps me bring her to the car. And her body's like almost in a complete back bend motion. She was in the hospital for about a week and died. Weed's organs saved three lives, including a teenage boy receiving her heart. And she was still giving. She's not even here and she's still giving. And Heaven was called to heaven. Some tenants on Stoner Avenue have to be out of their apartments by tomorrow. Good evening. I'm Greg Liggins. 
And I'm Johnette Magner. KTBS 3's Jade Belexa is on your side and she spoke with one of the tenants and the property owner. I got a one year old baby, you know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, they don't care. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, they, they don't care. I got to put my stuff in my son's house and I got to go stay with a friend and try to find me somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. this, 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 this is heartbreaking that people don't care. Yeah, they don't care. The building's owner, Johnny Kaplinger, said the city told her to add central heat and air. The city said electric heaters were not acceptable and exhaust was needed over the stove. She said the structure is not built to easily accommodate what the city is requiring her to do, and it would cost her tens of thousands of dollars to make the adjustments. We're, we're pretty much needing assistance with the one bedrooms, any openings as far as first month's deposit. Really, we need, we, 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 I called on the city all week. I've been calling on the city council to talk to the mayor's office, things of that nature. Kaplinger is 84 years old and she's had some tenants for 20 years. Rent is $400 and putting out these eight tenants on the streets is the last thing she wanted to do. I just called a man. He told me to come up with a thousand dollars. Let me get a thousand dollars in. Kaplinger says that there are three buildings. One building is boarded up and no one living there. She said this ordeal started because someone complained about safety. Jade Belexa, KTBS 3 News.